dado joints are some of the strongest woodworking connections we can make, and they're also some of the easiest. They consist of a three-sided channel in one workpiece that runs across the grain of the wood into which another workpiece fits. They offer incredible shear resistance because this workpiece is captured on three sides. And you'll find dado joints used often in case good projects like cabinets and bookcases where the shelves fit into the sides of the cabinet or bookcase and don't need to move. But you'll also find dado joints used as drawer dividers, partitions, and a host of other applications. They're definitely a joint that every woodworker should know how to build. Now there's a number of different ways to cut dado joints, but typically it's at the table saw with a dado blade set. And this is sometimes called a dado head. And it's really just a sandwich of saw blades. You get two blades that look pretty similar to standard saw blades, and they form the outside walls of the dado cut. And then you also get a number of what are called chipper blades. Now these will have two to four teeth on them, depending on the manufacturer. And the teeth are cut at different thicknesses. So you can stack your chipper blades in various combinations with the outer blades to make any data width you need, up to about an inch. You'll also need a throat plate for your table saw that has an opening in it that's wide enough for the dado you're cutting. And you'll need your saw's miter gauge. And it's a good idea to attach a sacrificial fence to your miter gauge. That'll back up the back edge of the cut to keep the blade from splintering out the wood there. And this sacrificial fence also provides more bearing support and that's helpful if you're dadoing a long bookcase side, for instance, and pushing that through the blade. Now making cuts with a dado blade really isn't any harder than cross-cutting with a standard blade, but it is a little tricky getting the cutting width just right. And here's what you're going for. You want the parts of your joint to fit together nice and snug without any extra slop. Now you could just try randomly putting your dado set together and measuring the blade width and making some test cuts until you stumble on the right width. But there's a faster way to get right into the ballpark. Set your outer blades on a flat surface and so the teeth aren't touching one another. Then take the workpiece that you're going to fit into the dado, set it next to your outer blades, and stack the chipper blades on top of the outer blades so the teeth aren't touching. Keep stacking them up until you find an arrangement that's flush with the top of your workpiece. Once you achieve that, you should have a near perfect dado fit. But if you don't get it just right, dado sets come with a stack of metal or plastic shims of different thicknesses. And if your dado width is a little bit undersized, you can use one or two of these shims placed between the chipper blades to make up that extra width. Once you land on what seems like the right width, go ahead and load it in your saw. And when you load your dado blade on your table saw, two quick things I want to point out. The outer two blades aren't interchangeable on the stack. The teeth on one blade faces to the right and on the other blade pitch to the left. Load the outer blades so that the points are facing outward. And typically the easy way to know which way that is, is to face the logos of the two blades outward on the stack. Also, when you're loading your chipper blades, don't line the teeth up with one another. Fan them out in relation to one another like a deck of cards. The only thing that should be making contact between the chipper blades are the blade bodies, not the teeth. With the blade installed, raise the blade to the cutting depth you want and make a test cut on a scrap workpiece. Hold the workpiece securely against the miter gauge to keep it from shifting left or right when you make the cut. So let's go ahead and check that test cut. Ooh, that's a good fit. Now if my dado had been too loose, I'd have to take one of the chipper blades off find a thinner one and possibly shim it out to get a better fit. And if the data was too tight, 
I'd have to add a shim or two to widen the cut just a little bit. And that's the importance of making test cuts when you're making dado joints. And once you've got your blade dialed in and you've made a couple of test cuts to verify it, mark your actual workpiece and cut your dado just like you made your test cuts. Dado joints are fundamental to woodworking and you'll use them again and again in your projects. And now that you know how to make them, they're a piece of cake. Good luck with your dado joints. And if you like this video content, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching.